Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Life, where today we are looking at this lovely specimen here. Now, this is the reshoot because look at all the blooms. It exploded, but that thunderstorm rain and stuff helped. Now, what is it? Coreopsis pubescens. Its specific variety is Sunshine Superman, and it's commonly known as Star Tixie. Most people just call it Coreopsis because that's the family. But anyway, it's in the Asteraceae family, which means it is a daisy, but looking at it, I mean... How could you think it's anything else? And the scientific name Coreopsis comes from the word chorus, bug, and opsis, like, or bug-like, which is referring to its seeds. Henceforth, tick seed. Its seed looks like little ticks. Which, in this case, since ticks are gross. Just gross. Um, I'll accept that for 800 Alex. But anyway, pubescence means hairy, which refers to... All of this fuzz. The leaves are kind of fuzzy. The stems are kind of fuzzy. It's fuzzy. It's cute and warm and fuzzy. It's native to the USA. However, this is a cultivar of traditional star tixie, which would be just plain Coreopsis pubescens. It is a variety that has better flowers, basically, of a brighter hue. You can see with that orangey yellow why it's called Sunshine Superman. It's great. And in fact, over here, I'm going to use the stick of destiny to push this into frame. That's what a seed head forming looks like. So, now you know. Now, uh, it is hardy in USDA zones 5 through 9. It is classified as an herbaceous perennial, which means it dies back in winter. It prefers a pH range of 5.7 to 7.8. Its exposure is full sun to partial sun, and this specimen is getting full sun, and I stuck a tra uh, solar light in it just for ambiance. However, the plant's outgrowing it. I'm going to have to move that light somewhere else. These are the breaks. Anyway. Its height can be 10 to 12 inches, which this plant most certainly is. You can see that it's got to be, it's up to the top of the solar light here, which is about 14 inches, or 12-ish, 14 inches, maybe 8. I haven't measured it, but you get the idea. Its width can be 6 to 12, and clearly it's all of that. And its other name, also known as name, is downy tick seed. Downy being another adjective for fuzzy or pubescent, pubescent. Right. Okay. At least the AKA name matches for once. Sweet Jesus this year. Woo! Some of these AKA names just make no darn sense. So, what does it do? Well, it attracts pollinators because it is a daisy. Don't surprise. Um, it self-sows, but plants are not long-lived. In this climate, they live somewhere between two to five years, roughly. So, you might have an established patch, and it might not be there in a couple years, but it'll be somewhere else. And I'll explain that in detail in a moment. So, it will definitely self sow if it's cared for. And this one in a pot is obviously cared for more than one in the ground in the test gardens. There are several patches. I dug this one up and nursed it and gave it fertilizer, and that's why it looks this good. It's proof that this plant can look fabulous, but it also looks fabulous in the wild. And there's a patch of it in the test garden. We'll walk over to it in a moment, and you'll see what it looks like when it when them there asters done done gone wild. But anyway. This cultivar, as I said, is bred ex exclusively for its flowers, and it's vegetatively propagated. However, I have to point out that this plant is the descendant of a descendant of a descendant of a descendant. Well, anyway, I first encountered these plants at a lovely nursery in state, and I bought a bunch of them in little four, you know, the little cell packs, the black plastic things that, like, they put tomatoes and small plants in. I encountered it in a package of those, and I bought a few and planted them in random spots, and they're in the garden and they're in none of the spots they were originally planted. They have gotten loose, and I'm not upset about this. They're pretty, they're reliable, they're not invasive, and they don't care about sandy soil or low fertility or how much water they get. I mean, they'll get droopy when we have extended periods of, of drought, which is usually August, but with climate change, I'm not so sure that's the case as much anymore. Either way, we have a full rain catchment system on site, so that's not an issue. But anyway, we're going to take a quick walk, and I'm going to show you some of the other patches. So, here we go. Look at that. These are all volunteers. They volunteered, and they've come up here every year, and these are descendants of descendants of descendants, because I introduced these plants something like eight to ten years ago. There's no way they're the same original plants. That's physically impossible. It doesn't happen. Oh, shoot, I just went Jonathan Frakes there for a moment. Anyway, I'm going to show you another patch. So we're walking. Yeah. Oop, what is that? Um, 
Anyway, almost tripped over something. Uh, don't mind the debris. We're clearing this zone here. We're recovering a crescent garden. And that's been an epic journey. This is just one pile of debris as a result of that. Blueberries are plenty. Okay, this is another wild patch out by the old shed. Look at it. See, now this wild patch is a little bit stringy. It's in partial shade, but notice it's no less beautiful than the one that's in a pot in full sun cultivated. That's what makes this plant great. You can rely on it to produce results, and that's a cheery shade of orangey yellow. I mean, someone might mistake its color for a dandelion or something if an observant, but it's obviously a Coreopsis. So this is why you should have it in your yard. It may escape your garden beds, but you'll be pleased with that result. Unlike certain other plants that escape and cause all kinds of trouble. So, if you have any thoughts about star tick seed, if you've grown it, if you know anything about it, maybe you want to tell me about some colors I didn't know existed. Because as far as I know, this is this or yellow is about the color. Go ahead and put that in the comments section. If you like this episode, hit like. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Um, the Forge blog is on hiatus until January of next year, so... There's an archive of articles up there. You can read them at your leisure. And beyond that, thanks for watching. As always, folks, keep them growing. See you next episode.